start things off by going through the history of the ship, kind of set a stage and a context for everything. Um, so I'll begin by explaining that the Queen Mary and her sister ship, the Queen Elizabeth, were designed beginning in the year 1926. These ships were designed to be the largest, fastest, and most luxurious ocean liners ever built. Uh, construction started on this vessel at the John Brown Shipyard in Clydebank, Scotland in December of 1930. But after the first year of construction, work on the Queen Mary was halted because the Great Depression was having such an impact that the Cunard Line, the company that was building this vessel, could not afford to keep that work going. They actually had to halt construction on the ship for over two years before the British government agreed to loan Cunard the money to complete the Queen Mary and the Queen Elizabeth on the condition that Cunard merge with their then rival British ship company, the White Star Line. Now, some of you may have heard of the White Star Line before. Uh, unfortunately for them, they are probably best known for the biggest disaster in that company's history. Uh, they once had a very beautiful ship called the Titanic, which I expect you may have heard of. Has everybody heard that? I'm not spoiling the ending, right, if I talk about that? Okay. Yeah, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but that ship, of course, unfortunately sank on her maiden voyage. Uh, that's why she's so well known, is because of that disaster. Uh, but what most folks also know about the Titanic is that she was the largest ocean liner at that time. But, uh, the Titanic sank in 1912. That's 18 years before construction begins on the Queen Mary. Still, many of our visitors are surprised when they find out, or when we explain, that Queen Mary is actually much larger than the Titanic was because she was built later. Uh, the main number we tend to talk about when we're talking about the size of ships is gross tonnage. That is a measure of the area of the ship. So it's like square footage for ships. Um, the Titanic was under 47,000 gross tons. The Queen Mary is 81,237. So we are nearly twice the size of what that ship was. Uh, we also still float to this day, so lots of differences there. Um, the Queen Mary uh, construction resumes after the two companies merged. The hull of the ship gets launched in 1934, and that is actually when she gets christened with the name Queen Mary. Prior to that, she had just been called job number 534, so obviously Queen Mary has a much better ring to it. In fact, Queen Mary herself christened the ship with her name. Both she and her husband, King George V, were present at the launching ceremony for this vessel. Now when the ship is launched, she's not completed yet. They launch the hull first, so they can be absolutely certain that she does indeed float, that everything is structurally sound. It then took another two years to complete her construction and her sea trials. They still had to add in the boilers and the engines, build the upper levels, the superstructure, and then they add the finishing touches you find here aboard the Queen Mary. Um, the first I'll mention are the beautiful types of wood. Uh, one of the ways that they wanted to symbolize the British Empire and the construction of the ship was by using woods from the trees from the various territories of the empire. And so they were bringing uh, trees in from all over the world. And there are actually 56 different types of exquisite wood and wood veneers that were used in the construction of the Queen Mary. It is believed that about a half a dozen of those types of wood at this point are at least endangered, if not extinct. They're completely irreplaceable. If you look just in that direction there, you see that piece of artwork that is called a marquetry panel, and that actually features 39 of the 56 different types of exquisite wood veneers that can be find, found here aboard the ship. So each one of those rays is a different type of veneer. And there's actually a key next to that that lists them in order. Uh, so as you're visiting the ship today, if you want to go have a look and check out some of those beautiful grains, uh, you can always do that. Cunard had also commissioned more than 30 different artists to provide original artwork for the passengers to enjoy along their voyage. We still retain so much of that original artwork that we are considered to be one of the largest intact art deco art collections in the world. The ship is completed and begins her maiden voyage on May 27th of 1936. And the Queen Mary would travel out of Southampton, England, then stop in Cherbourg, France, before steaming across the Atlantic to New York. 
This ship could make that voyage in record time. It would typically only take somewhere between four and a half to five days for the Queen Mary to cross the Atlantic Ocean, but her record voyage was accomplished in three days, 20 hours, and 42 minutes. Uh, that record won this ship the Blue Ribbon. She held that record for 14 years. So for nearly half of the time that this ship was out at sea, she was officially recognized as the fastest ocean liner on Earth. Uh, the Queen Mary would not only transport passengers across the Atlantic, but also the mail. The RMS and RMS Queen Mary stands for Royal Mail Service, or Royal Mail Ship. Uh, and the passengers that were traveling aboard this ship uh, were affluent, if not extremely wealthy. It was elegant and expensive to travel in all three of the classes aboard this vessel, and so it was not uncommon for you to find royalty. Billionaires, heads of state, captains of industry, movie stars, all sorts of celebrities traveled aboard this ship. The Queen Mary serves in that very exclusive way up until the start of the Second World War, and then they're fitting as many people aboard as possible because the Queen Mary served as a troop transport ship during World War II. She proved to be incredibly valuable to the Allied war effort. Uh, first off, because of the size of the ship, she could carry thousands at once. Uh, I'll just explain that as an ocean liner, she would typically carry somewhere around 3,200 people per voyage, that's passengers and crew. So she was typically carrying around 2,000 passengers and 1,200 crew. During the war, she carried many more people than that. In fact, this ship still holds the record for the most people ever carried on a single naval vessel at one time, because in 1943, the Queen Mary transported 16,683 people on one voyage. Um, we're told that this enormous vessel reportedly sat an additional three to four feet lower in the water just from the weight of all those people aboard. Now the other asset that was invaluable to the Queen Mary's success, especially during the war, was that tremendous speed. This ship was so fast, no enemy vessel could catch her. Adolf Hitler wanted to sink the Queen Mary so desperately that in 1942, he offered a quarter of a million dollar bounty to any captain who could sink this ship. Um, since we are all standing aboard the Queen Mary right now, I'm guessing you've already figured out that nobody got that prize. In fact, this ship spent more than six years transporting troops during the war. She never even came under fire because no vessel could get close enough to even attempt to sink her because of her speed. By the time the war ended, Winston Churchill estimated that the entire war had been shortened somewhere from one to two years in length due to the service of the Queen Mary and the Queen Elizabeth. And so uh, just keep in mind that this ship is truly a war hero. Uh, at the end of the war, the Queen Mary helped to reunite many of the families that had started across the Atlantic during the war years by doing what they called war bride voyages. Then after that, she was restored to her peacetime elegance. She resumed service as an ocean liner in 1947. The Queen Mary served for another 20 years after the war as a first class ocean liner, up until 1967, when she was finally decommissioned because of the rise in jet air travel. Uh, once they started to lose their passengers to the airlines, they were losing that revenue and it was becoming too expensive to keep operating the Queen Mary, and so Kinnard put the ship up for auction. She was purchased by the city of Long Beach for $3,450,000. She then made her final voyage to travel here to Long Beach, which she did under her own power. But instead of taking somewhere around five days, like it would typically take for this ship to reach New York, it took the Queen Mary 39 days to get to Long Beach from Southampton, because this ship is so enormous, she could not fit through the Panama Canal at that time, and so they did have to steam her all the way around South America and Cape Horn to get her here. Um, the ship arrived in 1967. She opened as a tourist attraction in 1971. Queen Mary's been in Long Beach ever since. Um, it's amazing when you look at the map on that, and you realize that at this point, she has many more years of history here in Southern California 
than she had out at sea before coming here. She spent 31 years out at sea. She's been in Long Beach nearly 56 years now. All right, thanks for listening through uh, that history of the ship. Um, before we start talking about other, other facets I'm gonna be yapping about, uh, do you have any questions for me so far?